Hey guys, this is Dr. Sandy with another educational video. We're talking about a very exciting subject today, which is brain health and how to keep your brain as healthy and as strong as possible. If you're new to my videos and you're watching this for the first time, I want to welcome you. If you've been watching for some time, welcome back. I really appreciate your support. As you're watching these videos, if you are learning something, if there's some value there, please like, share, and subscribe, and let's jump right into it. So brain health, now when we think about this, usually we might think of someone who's um, older, you know, that's an issue for like older people. And yes, that, that is true, but my intention today and what I'd like to share with you is let's be proactive. Imagine instead of waiting till someone has health problems with the brain, maybe with memory focus or whatever it is, why not be proactive when you're young, as young as possible and take care of this system so that you can have the maximum quality of life. You know, a big theme in our clinic is we are trying to tell people, don't go from crisis to crisis, you know, whether that's pain or dysfunction or whatever that looks like, get your body healthy and then keep it healthy. That is the best way to ensure the best quality of life. Now, I know all of us, uh, you know, culturally, I think we're taught like, oh, you know, if there's nothing wrong, just don't do anything about it. And if you look at all the research, though, we need to constantly be proactive. If you really want that highest level of health, you constantly have to work at it and you don't wait till it falls apart. Well, you should obviously do something at that point, but wouldn't it be better to have the best quality of life just on a regular basis taking care of your system? So let's jump right into it. So number one, I call it intentional peace. So what they're finding is that people who uh, meditate, people who are making time to slow down, and I use the words intentional peace, making time to intentionally be peaceful, making time to rest. Like, let's be honest, like we all get exposed to stress. There's so many things happening in the world, maybe with your work, maybe with your family. We need time to slow the brain down. And yes, when we sleep, we're resting, but intentionally making time for that prayer, that meditation, maybe writing in your journal, which we always advocate, which are just healthy things, whatever works for you. But intentionally, you know, start with a couple of minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes, whatever that looks like for you. When we actually take time to rest the brain, it has a chance to uh, regenerate. It has a chance to heal. The inflammation comes down. Uh, and the research supports this, that if we make time to meditate, if we make time to relax, if we do these kind of habits, the brain has a chance to heal. So I would start with that. Uh, number two, alignment of the spine. Now, we also know that the top part of the spine directly can affect brain health. So if there's any misalignments at the top area, yes, you can see things like the headaches, the migraines. Um, you may have issues with tingling in the face or the arms, hands, and shoulders. You can have stiffness in the neck. But what's happening internally, it starts to affect functioning. You have to remember the brain coming out of it is the spinal cord, and we want to keep that connection healthy. So if there's misalignments here, yes, you can have pain, but you can also have dysfunction, which may affect things like your focus, your mood. And actually the biggest thing where chiropractic really shines, it's a system to keep people relaxed. The biggest cause of stress to the nervous system is stress. Being worried, being anxious, being angry, being upset, all these kinds of emotions affect the, uh, the spine and the nervous system in a negative way and getting adjusted on a regular basis not just for pain management, but for optimal function will help the brain fire and work at a higher level. I mean, there's a lot of different analogies. You know, a simple analogy is if this is like a, a pipeline or a garden hose and you block that garden hose, it won't operate well. Maybe it won't function as well. You know, the signals are not going to operate the way they should. Uh, so we want to keep this pipeline from the brain and body open, especially when we're talking brain health, anything over here. And to go to another extreme, if you look at anyone who's ever had a bad trauma, concussion, car accident, which would be very extreme, besides feeling pain and discomfort, they'll usually say things like their memory's been affected, their mood's been affected, hard to focus. So those are extreme cases. So let's say there's someone like, yeah, just once in a while I can't focus, I can't concentrate, my mood is always off, I'm always agitated. One thing we can do to help the system, to help the brain as much as possible, is to keep this in healthy alignment with maintaining the spine with chiropractic care. Uh, another thing that is obvious, and we know this in the research as well, the foods you're putting into your body get reflected in the brain. So let's be specific. It seems like fish um, is a very beneficial thing for the brain when they've done the research. 
Uh, I know I've read about salmon and different fishes, but having fish in your diet is good for the brain. Also blueberries, which the more you, I'm telling you, when you research this fruit, it is amazing. There's so many benefits. And another benefit is that because it has antioxidants and other properties, they're finding it is also beneficial for the brain. Eating nuts, and specifically I was reading the walnuts, uh, seems to really help the brain as well. Having a diet high in greens, that's exactly what we tell our patients. Um, I mean, if you could have a green smoothie in the morning, that'd be great. But especially with your lunch and dinner, and I got to tell you, I've known this for a while this year because that other book I mentioned before, the, uh, the Pegan Diet, talks about the paleo and the vegan style coming together by Dr. Mark Hyman. Uh, he talks about this. So me and my family, as much as we can, and we're not perfect, but we're trying our best. With lunch and dinner, we're having leafy greens. Me and my wife are making sure our kids, as much as possible, are eating it. We want it to become a habit. We want to get to the point that if we eat our lunch and dinner and the greens aren't there, we almost feel like, you know, there's something missing. We're working towards that. So it's good to see my kids implementing that information. But this is something that helps the brain. Oranges, things in vitamin C are also very good. And of course, we also know the research that drinking water is good for the brain. If you get too dehydrated, it actually affects how the brain operates. Another thing we're finding in the research as well. So for years, I, I think it just makes sense that, okay, if I exercise, it's got to be good for my heart. It's got to be good for my muscles. But there's more and more research also pointing to the fact that if you exercise, it's actually good for the brain. There's more oxygen coming over there. The brain operates differently. It's it's literally when you're working out your body, it works out the brain. It helps with cognitive function. And it actually helps the brain uh, operate at a higher level. Sleep, I've mentioned before as well. When you sleep, and I was probably this person, I'd always be like, oh, come on, like, is it necessary? Like, you know, what is it really for? Like, that was me much, much uh, younger saying those kind of things. I always, For a long time, I thought, oh, what's happening with sleep? It's kind of a waste of time. It's, it's a luxury. It's a bonus. Uh, nothing can be farther from the truth. Sleep is critical, and I'm working on increasing my sleep levels. And we're finding that actually there's almost like these uh, a house cleaning, if you want to use that term. But when you sleep, the brain cleans up toxins. It cleans up uh, things that have happened throughout the day, and it gets the body ready for the next day. It's actually critical for brain health. You need to sleep. Um, you know, it depends on the person and everything. Generally, I've seen the research anywhere you can read from six to eight hours, seven to nine hours. I mean, you know your body, try to go to bed earlier, obviously. Well, and I, I can tell you this year, I've been better about it. I could still do better, but having good sleep will help the brain. And I'm actually using a new word. I'm starting to tell myself when I sleep, I'm recharging my body. And I'm gonna start saying I'm recharging my brain. I wanna think like I'm a cell phone and recharging at night that's the purpose of sleep. It's a chance for the body to repair itself. There's a lot of things happening. We think sleep is very passive. The body goes into a lot of healing processes uh, when we actually sleep, including helping the brain. Relationships. If we look at mental health research, they have found if you have good relationship with your family and friends, uh, and I, I don't know if you need hundreds, but if you have some good people you can rely on, these people mentally seem to be better off. They can handle things better. Maybe it's a way to talk to someone, to express to someone, but having healthy relationships is good for you and it's good for your brain. You can help your uh, family or friends. Uh, they can help you. It's amazing. It's a synergistic relationship, but it's another positive for the brain. Um, and then I'm going to say the biggest thing when I would say just based on logic and it would make sense, um, you need to make sure that you always have a purpose and time with that is learning. So if we want to keep ourselves healthy, we need to have a purpose that may shift as you go through different seasons in your life. There might be a time you're very work focused. There might be a season when you're taking care of a loved one or your kids or whatever, and then that changes. And then maybe you're involved with a charity, whatever that looks like. You need to have a purpose. There has to be a drive that's good for mental health. And then make a commitment on a regular basis to always learn. This is something I'm very committed to. I find learning exciting. It's refreshing. It keeps you recharged. And the good thing is if you're always learning, and especially if they've said things like languages or maybe playing an instrument or things like that, whatever it is, and I, I mean, I'm always into books as well, but learning every day, every day, learning something keeps your brain healthy. So if you implement these steps, it will really help your brain go to that next level. If it's too much information, maybe just start with one, two, or three, but do as much as you can. I want you to have the best life possible, the best brain possible, the best health possible, and the best quality of life. So again, if you like these videos, please like, 
share, subscribe. Um, also know that every Monday I put out a new video. And if you go to Powerflow Chiropractic under on YouTube, I have lots of videos on different health topics to help you and your family. So thanks for watching and God bless you.